Hello, I'm Scott Schubert with Trading Mastermind, and today I'm going to show you the absolute <laughs> ultimate secret to scalping the Forex market. I'm going to show you why the majority of people trying to scalp the Forex market will never get beyond the break even point, and most of them probably continue to lose because they're not doing what I'm about to show you. So let's get started with that right now. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe below and click on the bell icon so you can be notified of all our videos as soon as they're published. Okay, let me show you that the biggest problem with Forex scalping is the very mindset of the whole scalping process and how people go about it. So why is it that so many people want to scalp the market? So ask yourself, why do I want to scalp the market? Why don't I want, want to just uh, step back a little bit and trade, uh, for instance, on a little bit longer time frame? Well, I think that it comes down to an identity level belief. And when you look into personal development, you, can, you will find that a belief that's held at the identity level overrides everything else. So people will sometimes say, I have a personality type that demands that I'm, I am a Forex scalper. I'm a scalper. And so that's saying that that's their identity. And when you can shift that identity to, I am a person who will do what works best. Please show me what works best. Then you could trade in any way on any time frame. And you can be totally flexible about it because you don't have an identity that is attached to a certain type of trading. Many people have said, well, I'm a swing trader or I'm a scalper. And what they're saying is that's what they believe their identity is. Once you believe that your identity is that you're a person who is going to do whatever works best, then that frees things up. You can trade on a short time frame or you can trade on any time frame but it's not your identity. Now let me show you a little bit more about the technical side of how you can apply this stuff. Because if you do this, another part of Forex scalping is that people believe uh, this is my identity and I just go right to the short time frame and I just look for, for the I have indicator to cross. I just look for something to cross. I just get in. That's all I do. I just go down there and just get in, you know because that's their identity instead of if a person said well i do what will work the best for me and i look at all time frames and i may take a little bit more time to figure out before i get into a trade i don't just jump down there and get into a trade i take my time to decide what's going to be right and what's going to get the best results for me and it might only require a extra minute to figure out some things before you just go down there and get into a trade because let's take a look at that if you're going to scalp or trade the Forex market or do anything related to trading you need to know that markets do some version of this pattern right here and it's true so it's not like only people who believe in Elliott wave um, the market does this for the market does this on all charts for everyone in the world and if you want to know what it does then you'll just become aware that this is what it does it does different versions of this pattern right here so why do you want to know that because if you're going to trade the market you probably want to know what direction is it going and you probably want to know what would be the next entry what I'm about to show you is that if you take, let's say, an extra one to five minutes before you enter a trade, you could determine why you would want to enter a trade and in what direction, what will be the next entry. You do want to know that financial markets are forming a version of this pattern unceasingly it's always doing some version of this pattern and your job is to see it and be able to identify it but what's really really important 
is that you understand the concept of subdivisions. So this is a basic pattern that financial markets make. This is a trend, this is a correction. Now this is a really bad illustration, which I had to do with a pen tool, and it looks kind of weird, but this is an illustration of the subdivisions of all trends and corrections. When you realize that all trends subdivide on shorter time frames, then that would help you to know what to do on the shorter time frames before you go there. If you take one to five minutes before you go there, you will know what to do before you get there. Because this is a blueprint and this is a road map of the market. Once you see that, then it's going to be the power is in your hands because then you can know what to do if you're going to trade on a shorter time frame. Let me explain how this works because I have seen some amazing things. And that is that if you actually check, you will see that these subdivisions go all the way down to the shortest time frames. They start all the way out on the longest time frames on the monthly. That's where the roadmap starts and then it goes down, down, down. So it's telling you, here's what you're going to do on the next shorter time frame. Monthly says, well, if you're going to be trading, you're going to be trading on a shorter time frame than monthly, here's what you would do. The weekly would tell you if you're going to trade on a time frame shorter than the weekly, here's what to do. And then the daily tells you if you're going to trade on a time frame shorter than the daily, here's what you will do. And then once you see that and you get to the four hour and the one hour, that's where you're going to stop. You can go shorter than the one hour. But let me show you something. If this is the one hour, there are three times that you would want to trade on a time frame shorter than the one hour. And that would be one would be right here at the end of this correction of wave two. And another one would be right here at the end of this correction for wave four. Another one would be right here at the end of this correction, at the end of a B wave for the beginning of a C wave. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you may want to Google the subject so that you can get an understanding about what financial markets do so that you can become aware that they are making a continuous roadmap that tells you exactly how to trade. Let's take a look at that on a real chart. Okay, so let's take a look at this example, which is the pound yen. And a lot of people, when it comes to trading the market, and especially scalping, they just trade a pair that has the lowest pip spread. And then they only trade one pair because they don't want to be distracted. And that's how people have been conditioned. And so... By doing that, you're limiting yourself to sometimes uh, the pairs that you're trading are not clear and you could look at something that is clear and maybe the spread might be slightly higher, but so what? If you're trading based solely on choosing the lowest spread and the pair with the lowest spread, that is very limiting and you might want to choose the pairs that have the clearest patterns, choose the pairs that, that seem to make clear patterns that are easy to identify the turning points. So not that the pound yen is always that pair, it's always shifting from one to another, but let's just use this one because here's a recent example of a perfectly shaped trend. And so this is the daily time frame. And during the time that this was in a trend, then you would be able to identify that, not after the fact, you would identify it right when it starts to form a trend. And then that would tell you how you would trade it on all shorter time frames. So during the time that it was making this wave up, all the time it was making that section going up, you would be looking for the end of that in order to go short if you know that that's a downtrend already started. And that would apply to everything. So during all of this time, you would only be looking for short entries and just that alone would eliminate most of the losing trades. 
that alone. So on the daily time frame, there are pretty much two entries available to go short on the next shorter time frame. And obviously that would be the end of the wave two and the end of the wave four. And a lot of people don't realize that you can identify those. And some people were thinking, I'm just pointing at them in hindsight and you can't actually identify them. So if that were the case, there wouldn't be any point in me talking or making this video right now. So it was crazy. But I, I can understand a lot of people think, you know, because they can't do it and they haven't seen anyone that can do it, they don't believe that people can accurately identify these turning points. That's why you need to come to our training sessions so that you can learn how to do it. And then you will know that, yes, people can do that. And then that will open some things up for you. So on the next shorter time frame, there are two places that you would enter. And then that roadmap would apply to all shorter time frames. So while these are going down, you'd be looking for, um, if there's a trend on the eight hour or the four hour, you'd be doing the same thing. You'd be looking for all the short entries during that period of time. And on the one hour, whatever's on the one hour, and this is what's really, really important. Here's an example. There are, there should be three times during a complete cycle of a trend and correction on the one hour that you would go to a time frame shorter than the one hour to enter a trade. Now, a lot of people have been conditioned to open their charts and just go to the one minute or go to the five minute and enter whenever something crosses. And then they wonder why, you know, at half the time it's losing and they can't get above break even. They wonder why. It's because they're blind and they don't see the roadmap. It's right there. It's right there on your charts. There's a perfectly shaped roadmap that's telling you how you would trade. But the key is you must develop some skill. You need to develop the skill to be able to identify the end of a correction, the end of a, of a trend on all time frames. And just pointing at it in hindsight isn't how you do it. There's an actual skill. And it's not just um, something that is just one thing. There's no, And so many people believe that trading must be just, just one thing. It can't be anything other than just an indicator crossing something. Indicator crosses something. Why would it have to be something that's just an indicator crossing something instead of using an actual skill of reading the market and everything about reading the market? So you would need to develop the skill to identify clear turning points. And another key, key aspect of why this works is the ability to choose clear opportunities. When things are not clear, then you don't trade that. You look for something that is clear. And this is just a constant process of searching for things that are clear. That requires that you probably want to be flexible. Look at all currency pairs on all time frames, compare things together. It doesn't matter what time frame you're going to trade on. When you decide to enter a trade, it should be after you have found something that is very clear and you, you have very little uncertainty and you know that there's a high probability that you're going to win. And if you just choose one pair immediately and automatically go to a short time frame, you've eliminated everything that could possibly help you to be able to trade. So in scalping, if there's a trend on the one hour, there will be two places where you would want to enter on a time frame shorter than the one hour. Maybe you can figure out where those places are. And then after you do that, you might have some questions about how do I identify those points? Because I, you know, I've tried it here and maybe I didn't quite understand it. And then maybe then you would be on the right track to possibly develop a real skill in trading that you could apply to trading on any time frame and be able to get a higher probability of winning trades and a higher win to loss ratio and a better bottom line results or an increase in capital for your trading account. Definitely having a skill 
and proving it to yourself over a period of time will be something that would help you if you're going to trade. Let me know if this makes any sense or would you just would just take your charts and just go back, take the euro versus the dollar, go back to the one minute, the five minute, and just get in when something crosses something. Keep on doing that until you get to the point where you realize that that's not, never going to work. And what what is it that would work? Well, might be that this is what would work. You think? I made another video about how anyone can increase their winning trades in Forex scalping using a confidential method that I have figured out on my own experience. You can watch that video right up here. So in the meantime, have an excellent time with your trading and let me know if you have any more questions about this. If you have any questions, any specific questions about this, put your comments below and I may just answer it in another video. So until the next time, remember to trade deliberately and live your life deliberately.